Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about glassware and in particular, recommending some of the best brands in the market in the mid tier and going right up to the top end of the market. But what I'll be doing is focusing in specifically on stemware and not the brand's entire range of glassware products. I'm Anisu Sagonda and I manage a luxury lifestyle management business in London. My content is largely educationally focused and geared towards people who are typically new to money or keen to explore alternate midlux or super brands that are a little under the radar but still heavily weighted on quality. a small handful of products and services I'm absolutely passionate about and I'll go to any length um, to get either the best experience or buy the very best product that I can afford and it's very much in keeping with the theme of my channel which as you know is buy better buy less and about five years ago I had a real eye-opening game-changing moment I was invited out for dinner uh, dinner reservation was for seven and my dining companion called me about midday to ask what wine I would like and I thought well we're meeting at seven why don't we just take a look at the menu together once we've decided what we're eating we can then order accordingly but he insisted he wanted to crack open one of his uh, fine bottles of red wine he gave me a couple of options and I went for the one that I knew I would never get the chance to try again in my life. It was from Chateau Petrus, one of the most illustrious wine producers in the world. And it was a vintage I only ever dreamt about drinking. I had literally tasted this wine, a sliver of it, a sip at a wine tasting. And I never thought I'd try it again. And I thought, well, I'm getting a few glasses. Why not? We arrived at uh, the restaurant seven o'clock. We had uh, cocktails until about 7.30, quarter to eight, and then we ate after eight. So by this point, we had, the wine had had about three to four hours to decant. And we were dining at a place called 67 Pall Mall. And for those who don't know, who are not in London or may not be aware, it's one of a small handful of private members clubs in London with a particular niche. And 67 Pall Mall is very much focused on your hardcore wine um, drinkers, people who are absolutely fanatical, your ardent wine drinkers and collectors. And what they offer is access to a huge selection of fine wines. And they also have storage facilities for you to be able to store some of your wine. So what that means is that whenever you're dining, you can call ahead, whether it's cigars and wine with the boys, a meeting or Sunday lunch with your family, and they'll decant either one of theirs or wine from your collection. So by the time you arrive, it really has had time to open up. But what I realized is when we started drinking just after eight, when I say to you, my heart literally stopped beating. I don't mean that lightly. I literally mean that the wine was sensational. And I just thought, oh my goodness, it all made sense. It all clicked. Um, I always thought decanting when people talked about, about it, it was entirely pretentious. But now I really understood from my own experience, direct experience that decanting gives you time to really open up that wine and the air enables it to breathe and to open up and develop into its true potential. And by the time you drink it, it has opened up and it is tasting its very best. And that wine continued to get even more delicious as the evening progressed. So this particular video was just a lot of fun making because I love good wine. So for me, when I have wine, it all has to work. The wine itself, the, the wine glasses I'm using, the company, the food, the dinnerware, the cutlery, it all has to come together superbly. As I've done with uh, previous videos, I am going to be recommending retailers as well as brands in the mid tier and going right up to the top end of the market. I'm going to be recommending stemware made from two materials, glass and crystal. Glass is usually from your entry level mid tier retailers. And then your crystals typically um, the top end of the mid tier going right up to the top end of the market. That tends to be crystal and it's usually crystal um, lead free rather. And uh, how they differ, glass and crystal, is glass is usually thicker, it's less fragile, it's uh, less expensive, and it's also non-porous, so you can wash that in the dishwasher. Whereas crystal's a lot thinner, it's a lot more fragile, it's a lot more expensive. 
and um, it is also porous so you need to hand wash that but what you find with glass wine glasses is because of the shape you don't have the options of different shapes therefore you're hitting the wine at different angles depending on the type and you have more options in terms of different types of glasses with crystal uh, wine, just normal glass wine glasses typically don't bring out the true and best flavor they don't let it breathe as well as for example your crystal wine glasses and also the other thing with your crystal wine glasses is that because they're thinner and they have the thin rim it means when you drink the wine the transfer of wine from the glass down your tongue is a lot more seamless it's um it's a better flow and then now switching back to my retailers as i mentioned my entry-level retailers, the usual suspects I've mentioned in my previous videos, the dinnerware and cutlery video, you have Ochre Design, you have Conran Shop, and you also have Heels and Sun. And then moving on to your top end of the market, um, same high-end department stores I've mentioned before, Selfridges and Harrods, but throw into that mix, another good place is Liberties of London. I love Liberties of London because they bring a totally different angle to things. Their styles are different, they're quirky, and they go for brands that are a lot more niche and new, edgy, up-and-coming brands. So Liberties is always going to be different to other high-end department stores like Selfridges, Harrods, and Harvey Nichols. Um, they're very similar, those three, in terms of just the range of products that they offer but with liberties they go out on a totally different um, angle and they tend to stock the brands that are niche to London if you're looking for something at the top end and it's niche uh, you're more likely to find it um, at liberties and then maybe Harvey Nichols and then the other top end place is Thomas Good um, that I've spoken about again in previous videos. You cannot beat Thomas Good in terms of just the selection of brands at the very top end of the market. So that's your mid tier going right up to the top end of the market in terms of retailers. And then looking specifically at brands, again, starting in the mid tier with one that I've spoken about again in my last two videos, Vilroy and Bock, a German brand. You cannot beat them for quality, for price, for ready availability, for your entry level uh, mid tier brand. Um, their range of glasses is fantastic. And in the video, my first video, the Kitchen Basics one, where I was introducing this whole home series, which I'll attach above, um, I sourced uh, a good number of wine glasses and also water tumblers for my client from Vilroy and Bock. And it's a great entry level brand, whether it's an introduction to luxury or it's something you want to keep um, and use all the time you can't go wrong with it it is a phenomenal brand my next brand is Riedel's and Riedel's is legendary within the wine glass world uh, as a brand that's very much focused just on wine glasses and they pr do a very good job of it and I particularly like brands like Riedel because when you're focused on one product you go on to produce a product that's very very good in fact the very best and in terms of just quality and price and what you're getting and in particular the fact that you have individual wine glasses within their various ranges so particular glasses for the type of wine and therefore you ensure you're hitting the as hitting the wine at the correct points at the correct angle and I would like to recommend their entry level uh, range which is amazing which is fantastic and will do a good job it's Vinum my next recommendation is an Irish brand, legendary as well within the crystal wine glass world or just crystal space, uh, whether it's figurines, it's um, sculptures, it is wine glasses, it's Waterford. They used to produce a lot of hand cut products, but now most of their work is uh, more, machine wa uh, more machine cut. So it's not as detailed as it was before, but still a very good quality product. My next recommendation within the mid-tier space, but getting um, higher in terms of quality and also just the prestige, the heritage of the brand, it's a brand called William Yearwood. It's a British brand and their particular glasses are very distinct in terms of being fairly heavy. They're very ornate, uh, a lot of hand cut engraved work and uh, their work is very much inspired by um, 18th, 19th century antique work from Ireland and um, Britain. And then also within this um, top mid tier going towards luxury, you have Lalique and Lalique is uh, legendary for their figurines, for their vases, um, for their sculptures, but also wine glasses. But they have maybe just a couple of ranges and they come in your in their signature frosted look. So if it's something you're after the glass with the frosted look, then you have Lalique. Also within that, I'd like to throw in a bohemian style luxury brand called Moza. And Moza is available from Thomas Good in the United 
United Kingdom. I really like Mosa because their glasses are colored. You don't get plain uh, wine glasses, but um, there's a lot of color. And in particular, um, they have a style I really like. It's not available at the moment with the pandemic. I've tried to get hold of one of the glasses, but they do your very big life-size wine glasses, literally. So imagine a situation you're on a, you're out at a wine farm in Franchoc or Stellenbosch. It's an alfresco event, a wedding, a party, an anniversary, whatever it may be. And you have the tall tables, your standing tables, and you have the very big goblets. So the stem is about 25, 30 centimeters. And then you have the very big goblet, which literally could take a whole bottle of wine. But it's really fun, really playful. It's very sophisticated as well in, a, in an elegant, understated sort of way, uh, very classy. And I like those glasses. Thomas Good usually have them in their table settings, but they've changed them and they don't have them in stock for me to, to show you a picture. But I'll try and get just normal pictures. But Moza is a great brand. If you just want something fun, something playful, something different, then Moza. And then another one I'd like to recommend. This is a British interiors designer stroke fabric producer, antique furniture uh, company. They're located on Pimlico Ro Road in London. And they house quite a number of um, artisans and craftsmen who exhibit their work within their store. It's a store called Rosie uh, Un Uniac. And I really like their style of products for, the in for your interiors, the furniture and so forth. But the thing that I really like and I want to recommend is two things. Uh, in particular, the fluted candles and also the fluted wine glasses. I like fluted styles and they do the fluted take, uh, the fluted look very well it's lovely so rosie uniac is a great interior designer stroke fabric designer stroke your interiors um, uh, brand uh, a great brand in the united kingdom and then moving on uh, to the top end of the market the top end of the market is very confidently dominated by two french heavyweights you have baccarat and saint louis they differ in terms of the style Baccarat is very distinct in terms of it's a very heavy, heavily ornate um, glass. Um, all of their work, whether it's chandeliers, figurines, vases, sculptures, whatever it may be, it's 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 very there's a very characteristic Baccarat look. It's heavy, it's highly chiseled, it's very ornate. Whereas Saint Louis is the total opposite. It is very much focused on your light, delicate, more dainty look. It's nowhere near as as ornate. They do have some ornate pieces, but nowhere near as Baccarat, uh, as ornate as Baccarat. And they are owned by uh, Hermes. And Hermes, as we know, is one of the biggest and best luxury brands in the world. And anybody Hermes works with, for example, Puy for Car for Cutlery, it's always going to be a very good brand they produce the best their work their elegance is very understated the quality the craftsmanship speaks for itself and San Luis is very much focused on producing a product that's focused on color a lot of their wine glasses have a lot of color in them and what you'll find is Baccarat have invested heavily in into a very strong, a very aggressive marketing campaign. When it comes to wine glasses, the first brand anybody talks about at the top end is Baccarat. So whether it's placement, uh, product placement in movies, uh, they're mentioned in, in, in music videos and so forth. You don't get that with um, San Louis. It's a brand that you have to be in the know. Not a lot of people know about San Louis. It operates very much under the radar. It's understated quality. And if you want the best, you can get the best. And what you will find is that although Baccarat is more expensive than San Louis, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better than San Louis. It's very much a personal thing. And I think when you when you're in the industry and you know how it operates, you know San Louis is the understated, um, elegant, the best. And if you hold up two glasses, a Baccarat and a San Louis glass to the light, what you'll notice straight away is that the San Louis glass will be clearer and brighter than the Baccarat glass. And that's because the quality of the sand used for San Louis is better than Baccarat. So although Baccarat is more expensive, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a better product. It's just down to their marketing campaign. It's a very good quality product. And what you like as the buyer what you like is very much a personal thing and you should go for what you like but in terms of if i was to choose san louis you've got the hermes behind that the quality the prestige associated with that the craftsmanship and the quality of the product speaks for itself 
what I'm finding with a lot of my clients, particularly as they get older, get to my age, mid 40s and above, they very much are now focused on in-house entertainment and ramping up um, what they have. So, for example, looking specifically at the bar, a lot of clients will ask me to help them get a bar set up or get access to really good quality wines. And then, as I've said earlier, you need good quality wines with good quality um, wine glasses. And I'd like to recommend two brands that are amazing for your in-house entertainment specifically for the bar i wouldn't recommend them for dining because they come in in all sorts of different sizes they're very particular particular glass for a particular wine two brands the first one is an austrian brand very distinct in terms of the style of it and then the other brand uh, a brand i mentioned earlier uh Riedel's, with their entry-level venom but i'm going to recommend at the top uh, the very top end range it's called sommelier it's their very best and if you're somebody who is passionate you like good wines you drink good wines then lobmeyer and uh, Riedel's, in particular the sommelier are two very good brands you need to have on your radar but I've given you a huge selection of glasses from the mid tier going right up to the top end of the market to cater for all styles, tastes and budgets. If you have any further questions, as always, shoot me a message um, down in the comment section below. But otherwise, I thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.